I'm Becky Goldsmith and I want to walk you through the basics of foundation paper piecing. You will have noticed already that you've cut your fabric pieces to match the spaces on the, sh on the, on the papers themselves. So, for block number one, space number one, I'm using this yellow and for space number two, this orange. When you sew, you always sew with your fabrics right side together. So I'm going to turn this over. Now, the reason I'm setting the fabrics together this way, with the orange shoved in that direction, is because if you look at the paper, you'll notice that one is down here, and two is way up there and the pointy seam allowance for two is way up there. So when you position the paper with the lines up facing you, the right side of the paper facing you, you want to make sure that you line it up so that the number one fabric is all the way underneath the number one shape and its seam allowances. And the number two fabric is underneath all the way down to there, to the end of that point, and it will extend all the way over to here. Every time you add another piece of paper, or I'm sorry, another fabric, you need to make sure that when it opens up, it's going to cover that space. And if you have any doubts about whether that will work, you can always put in a pin in the seam line right there and carefully flip this over and test to make sure that when this is sewn, it's going to go all the way out and cover the end of that, um, the shape on the paper. So, right here. Now, I don't pin my shapes to the paper before sewing them. I have too much trouble holding on to things to do that. But, when I'm positioning the paper, I would position it just like this. And then I would take it to the sewing machine and sew it. Now, this shape has an end that ends in a circled line. So I can either put the needle down here and back stitch to that point and then sew to the end of the solid line, or I can put it in my sewing machine like this and begin off this end and sew to this line and then back stitch. But you always sew on the solid line the dashed lines indicate the edges of the seam allowance. Once you've sewn the two fabrics to the paper, you'll want to flip it over and press the number two fabric open. Now, some of this is going to get cut off, but it's really hard to see at this point so when I press, I go ahead and press at least a quarter of an inch or a little more of that seam allowance, even though it's not attached. I fold that under gently and continue pressing all the way out there. Make sure you get it pressed nice and open. And you'll notice that in some cases, the shape that you've sewn down is going to be just exactly the right size. Usually it won't be, but sometimes it is, because honestly I couldn't think of why I should make it be bigger than it needs to be. That's just wasting fabric. So be accurate, press it open, um, and then we'll proceed to the next step. Once one and two are sewn to the paper and pressed open, You'll want to flip the paper over and trim away the excess fabric so that you can sew number three in place. Now, with this one, it's real easy because the number two fabric goes out there so far. 
it's real easy to think that that's where you need to cut it off but you'll notice that isn't this this is this is where number three gets added this is the seam line that you'll sew the number three fabric to the shape and then it'll flip over and cover the number three space so you've got two options here when you're trimming you can either do what I do which is place a postcard or a chunk of a file folder something you know the edge of a file folder I would place that just inside that dashed line fold this back and then I'd use my rotary cutter and very carefully cut just 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 a littlest bit to the outside of that paper because if you cut too close to the paper you'll cut the paper you'll cut it apart if you do that if you nick the paper just fix it with a piece of scotch tape now some of you are gonna this this part would make you nervous if you're one of those people that that makes you nervous instead bring your postcard or your file folder to the seam line right there and fold it back on the seam line and then get a ruler and place the ruler over the paper adding a quarter inch seam allowance that's really important if you don't add the quarter inch seam allowance and you cut this even with the edge of the paper oh you're gonna have to start over with a whole new paper right so you would place that right there and cut now why do I not like to do it this way it's because for me that's just one more step lining up the lining up the ruler um, so I don't do it what I do instead is this I place it on the dashed line fold it over and cut it doesn't really matter which way you do it the outcome is the same but be consistent and always remember that you have to have a quarter inch seam allowance that is even with that dashed line before you add your next piece so once you've trimmed away your excess fabric you'll move that out of the way turn the paper back over flatten it out and add the number three fabric when you add this piece always remember that when you open it up this shape needs to cover all of the number three plus the seam allowance and it's a seam allowance at this end as well because it comes out to a point so place your fabric in position turn it over and sew when you sew this shape you'll notice that you'll start probably at this end and so past that circled point to the end of the number three line seam line stop at that circled point and back stitch at each step of the way here's one the next one and I've already sewn the number three down and I've already pressed it when I turn this over to see what comes next four comes next what I've noticed myself is as consistent as I try to be sometimes when I sew these shapes together um, I might end up with my fabric just a little longer than it should be there or just a little shorter as long as you've got enough seam allowance you're good if you need to cut off a little bit of this strip as I do here well I would just include that in my cut let me angle it so you can see I would just very carefully cut that whole thing away whoops I didn't quite get it and there we go so that shape is now ready for me to add the number four strip I'm going to add it about there after a little while you can tell where to put the strips so I know that this end of the strip is easily going to reach that seam line and I know that the end of the seam line at the end of that point 
is going to be down here somewhere. I can place the number four here. So to that line and back stitch, either way, whichever direction. Once that's pressed open, once the number four is pressed open, I would look to number five. For this one, I don't really have anything to trim, so I would turn it over, add the next number five strip, just like that. When that is sewn and pressed open, the next strip that gets sewn is the number six at the end of the at the end of the diamond. You would just fold this back, trim away the excess fabric there, press it open. Once you press it open, then you trim away the excess um, fabric that's all around the diamond. And you can do that either with a rotary cutter and a ruler or by eye. And I'll show you that um, in a separate video. I hope this helps. The key points here are to always sew with your fabrics right side together. Always make sure that you position each strip so that when it is um, folded open and pressed, it covers the space it's supposed to cover. Back stitch at the circled points. Take your time and have a good time. Thanks for watching.